Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not pot should be legal, and we're starting right now with Carissa's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us. Carissa, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, James. Um, I'm glad to be back. Um, so from my research, I am not an ideologue on this position. I have researched it. I've looked through the data on it. And it, it seems to me that obviously weed needs to be decriminalized. First off, it's the first step we need to take. But one thing that we have not been able to move forward on because of the um, the tight restrictions on weed is FDA approval. In the 1900s, the late the 1990s, um, there was some research through the FDA on weed, but that was stopped. So I think what we should do is we should move it from a section one drug to section two drug or a schedule one drug to a schedule two drug. And we need to actually do some more research because right now a lot of the research is inconclusive. There is not much to suggest that weed is very beneficial medically. And there is a lot to suggest that it is very detrimental, especially not necessarily if you're doing it every once in a while, but especially if you do it regularly. So I believe we should decriminalize it, which would mean that it would still be a misdemeanor, but there would be no you know, criminal offenses. Um, we can, so that would also mean that doctors could prescribe it, but I do feel, I do believe that that should be dosed. Um, currently with a lot of the medical weed that we're seeing in states that allow medical marijuana, it is not dosed. You have very large quantities that you can buy all at one time. Um, and it's honestly just, uh, for many people use it just to get weed recreationally. So it's almost like a workaround. Um, so I think that needs to be closed up, that gap. I think if it is um, used medically, it should be dosed like a prescription drug, which would be allowed um, if we decriminalized it and we were able to prescribe um, but generally speaking, I think we need to do a lot more research before we even consider full-scale legalization. Um, and even if we do legalization, I think we need to be very strategic about doing so. And we need to make sure that people understand the risks involved in especially um, abuse of marijuana. And that's all I have. Thank you very much, Carissa, for that opening statement. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And hey, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for many more juicy debates to come. For example, you'll see at the bottom right of your screen, Alex Stein and Vegan Gaines will be debating veganism on trial. So you don't want to miss that one as well as many more. And with that, we'll kick it over to Tom. Thanks so much for being here. The floor is all yours. Yeah, thanks, James, as always, for hosting. Thanks, uh, Hunter Avalone, for joining the Zoom call. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so my position is I don't understand how anyone doesn't understand why we shouldn't legalize weed. Like, there has been tons and tons of studies on weed, both long-term and short-term. It does have a negative side effect, especially depending on the age you take it. If you start taking it younger, it has more of a side effect. But it's less of, than caffeine. It's less than sugar. It's less than cigarettes. It's less than any of the medications, like, uh, that doctors give you it it doesn't it essentially does less than anything sugar like, does less than sugar this is this is not a, a huge impact at all it has very minimal impacts even over long-term usages compared to like any normal drug um, it definitely makes people relax it's used to as a pain suppressant which we know it works as a pain suppressant which is kind of the only thing it's used for as a medical uh, aid to decrease pain and it's significantly less damaging than any other pain suppressant so like oxycodone you can get addicted to and it can kill you um all of those kinds of drugs are, are, are bad whereas marijuana is not bad it causes not those bad things to happen so obviously if we're talking about for medical usages marijuana is a obviously better choice than literally any other pain med um it, i mean it, it does less damage than consistent advil usage Advil will damage your intestines and your stomach if you use it in your liver too much. Marijuana doesn't do that. So 
is it perfect? No, it does have some negative side effects, especially if you start taking it young and continue to take it a lot. Um, are they bad? Not really. I mean, like you score lower on some verbal tests. That's about it. It's not, it's not, it's not a terrible outcome. Uh, it's, it has a very significant effect at lowering pain, which is good. So, I mean, I don't understand why anyone would be opposed to using this as a medical drug and talking about legalization, like, is there any drugs that do less damage? Sugar, caffeine, tobacco, anything? I don't think so. I think those are all worse, yet they're all legal. So it doesn't really make much sense to say that this should not be legalized, just completely just go do it in your home if you want kind of a thing, because it, it, it doesn't do significant damage. Like people can drive on marijuana and are less impaired than drinking. It, it doesn't, I don't, I, I just don't understand why anyone would think that this is not something that should just be immediately legalized. I, I don't get it at all. I'll conclude there. <laughs> you got it. Thank you very much, Tom, for that opening statement as well. And we're going to jump right into open conversation, folks. We are very excited for it. Carissa and Tom, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, you didn't so I laugh think... at my hunter joke. I called you <laughs> hunter. You didn't laugh. <laughs> I'm just used to it. Um, so I actually agree with a lot of what you said. Um, so I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm anti-weed. Um, my position is that it needs to be researched by the FDA, like every other drug, right? So, so you have, are you familiar with like the different, um, schedules of drugs? Like you have, there's like the different classifications of drugs. And I think it's absolutely insane that like legally we cannot prescribe weed like under federal law i think that's absolutely insane i agree with you that um that there are definitely cases that we can that it would make sense to prescribe weed instead of something like opioids like you mentioned um i think that's definitely fair would you agree that maybe a, a good potential compromise would be dosing it dosing marijuana yes why like if if there was some amount that you could overdose on then yes it would make sense to dose it but you lit, it's literally impossible to overdose on marijuana why would we but it, it is possible to become addicted in, in extremely rare cases like it's it's really hard to get addicted to marijuana and that's not true there's it actually they found that um 10% of those who try marijuana or actually just you maybe not try but use marijuana on a like just, I guess, blanket use marijuana, have a dependence on it, um, that it constitutes abuse. It's called um, cannabis use, um, I think it's CUD, is C-U-D, dependence, cannabis use dependence. It's a very, it's funny because I think that's a very common perception that you can't get addicted, but you do. And it's actually not just psychological, you have like withdrawal effects. It changes your brain. I have a study here if you'd like to. I know this is just more of like a more like a conversation, but I did, I looked into it a little bit. And from like NIH, it talks about how it, it does actually, it remodels your brain reward circuits. And so yeah, it, I, I totally agree. Like you can get addicted to anything. Like I'm addicted to chess but and video games. Common. I think that's well, the point. 10% isn't common. Like the addiction rate to caffeine is 30%. The addiction rate to nicotine is 80%. Do we see a significant cognitive decline in regular caffeine drinkers? Um, or anything like comparable to that? For nicotine, we definitely do. For alcohol, mm. we definitely do. Alcohol is 50%. It's legal. Um, but I feel like that's a little bit of like a pivot though. I like, I understand, like, I, I think that's another conversation to have, but I think just talking about the dangers specifically for marijuana, do you see it as being like, do you understand that like people can actually get addicted and have like negative effects? Well, yeah, but I don't see that as a problem. Like you can get addicted to anything like caffeine or alcohol or cigarettes, but we let like, right. the fact that you can get addicted isn't the reason to make it illegal. So uh, you're right. I think it's the negative side effects that have come along with that that addiction. Is that right? 
uh, yeah, if there were like significant negative side effects, that would be a good reason. Like if you died, like heroin, heroin is a yeah. good thing to keep legal because you die. <laughs> that's but fair. I think that's fair. The, what the, about site, um, potential? There is data that suggests causal relationships between psychosis and marijuana. Do you think that's something that we should study more before making it legal? Well, I mean, we could study it more, but I think it depends on the rate. If the rate is at a such significantly small enough number that it's not really a big deal, then no. I, mean, I agree with you. Like but do you vaccine, think we should study the, the it first? COVID vaccine will kill. Well, we have, yeah, we have t- marijuana is one of the most studied drugs because it's so prevalent and easy to produce and easy to study. And there's long term studies because people have used it for decades. So it's one of the most studied drugs. It's but the issue is that it's, than- it's mostly longitudinal. It's, it is very hard to have control groups because of the federal, um, and so, so like a lot of the studies are voluntary response, right? So for example, they found that people, when they respond and like talking about the side effects of marijuana, they will say that they didn't experience any cognitive decline, but the limited studies that we have conducted that have been able to be controlled, they found that even though they were self-report that way, they they um, perform much lower on tests. So all I'm saying is that it's there's a big part of studies that we are not missing that we are not able to engage in because of the federal illegalization of marijuana, right? Uh, no, I, I agree. It's harder to get a study on a class one drug, but we still the do controlled it. Like, study, right? Right, but we do it. Like there's tons of controlled studies. It's not like they're they're, they're like impossible to find. Like I can just Google them on Google Scholar and I can find dozens they, of them. Do you think that those controlled studies are to, are comparable to the rigor that an FDA approval would subject uh, it to? Yeah, because all the FDA does is the same scientific studies that the colleges do. In fact, they just kind of pawn them off to the colleges in lots of cases. But usually it's it's like much more large scale, right? Because my understanding yeah, they do going lots through of them the, at the same time. Yes. Yeah. So going through the data from what I've been reading from doctors who have studied this, a big concern that they've had is that this isn't as studied as it, as it, as it should be, right? So they want to do more studies on it because, so for example, they don't know if it actually, the effect that it has on mental health. There's some data to suggest that it helps anxiety. There's other data to suggest that it does not, right? So I feel like those types of things or a causal relationship between schizophrenia um, or psychotic episodes, I think, do you feel like that might need to be established before we look at making things legalized across the board? Not really, because we have such an abundance of use. We have lots of cases to know if it did, if it caused a significant increase in psychosis, we would see lots and lots and lots of psychosis everywhere in the country because it's used everywhere in the country by a huge amount of the population. And it has been for decades. So if it was Mm -hmm. a serious risk of actually causing psychosis, then we would see it a lot in society, but we don't. So like we know heroin causes death because people die when we find heroin, but we don't, we don't find like a massive spike in the amount of psychosis over the past 50 years, even though there's been a massive spike in the amount of marijuana usage, which means we can say direct correlation, probably not a big thing. That's not, it's not a major contributor to psychosis because we can just look at the data. There's been a massive increase in marijuana usage, not a massive increase in psychosis cases. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think I understand when, and actually there's a study that talks about exactly what you're saying. Um, But it it says it is, as they say, it's puzzling. It's a puzzling aspect of cannabis associated psychosis is that schizophrenia is not rising in incidents to reflect prevalent cannabis use, but they have been able to establish, and I think they go into like a lot of detail of like the genotypes and stuff, but they say carrier type, carriers of a genotype. Um, and they, I think from my understanding, it's like a stress diathesis model, right? So you have like an underlying disposition maybe for psychosis, but you like using weed is a stressor that can bring that out and as a higher risk, as a 10 times higher risk of psychosis. It says carriers of, um, I'm trying to see here. It seems like it's like a, from the literature, it seems like it's a much higher risk of psychosis for those who use weed. Yeah. I mean, that's true of every drug. Every drug has some kind of 
strange effect on a certain population that has some genetic defect. Like even the the vaccine is said to have literally killed some people because they have some bad genetic reaction to it mm-hmm. in their in their immune system. Um, does the question isn't about can it negatively affect some group? It's is it a large enough group of the population where this is a significant threat that it should be legal or illegal in the situation? No. Right. We, we know it's not because it just doesn't have it. There's like, like you said, like the study says, this is not a very prevalent thing. The amount of psychosis is not going up. Which means- so it does say, right. So it says here, I'm sorry, I, di- I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, it says recent meta-analysis lend further support to the hypothesis that cannabis use um, use, use causally contributes to the increased risk risk of development of schizophrenia. In a comprehensive and systematic meta-analysis, Moore et al. determined whether cannabis use contributes causally to the development of non-substance psychiatric illness. The study was designed as much as possible. Um, two of the most important methodolo- methodological problems. Uh, let's see here. Well, I mean, it's, I, it found an association, and I understand that you're saying that. Um, it says the author suggests the need of renewed warning about the potential hard, harmful effects of cannabis. Well, one of the things you read there was a non substance addiction. A non substance addiction is something that is not related to the thing you're drinking, it's an action based thing, like picking your nose or scratching the back of your neck too much, or uh, sex, gambling, those kinds of things, internet games. Things no, that don't, saying, are not related to the substance. Well, no, it says it's a causal, it contributes causally to the development of a non substance psychi- psychiatric illness. So it's a causal relationship to a non substance addiction. Psychiatric, no, 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 non substance psychiatric illness, such as schizophrenia or affective disorders. So they've linked it causally. Well, again, the question would be is like, how much? Like any drug, no, you're, you're always going you. to find like this drug can lead to death if you take it. Like, but, okay. So, right. And I, I understand that, but I think I don't know if we're the people to be determining whether or not the risk outweighs the benefit. Because from what I'm seeing, there are substantial risks, such as this one, even more so the cognitive situation, um, which has also there's risk with driving too, right? And I understand it's a lot less than when you're drunk, but even when you're not high, the cognitive decline, um, it makes it so that you cannot react as quickly to situations which can even impact your driving when you're not high. So to me, I'm seeing like all these negatives, but then the positives even the positives like relaxing you can actually be associated with the negatives. The relaxing is actually like a brain, like changing your brain and like, um, which can contribute to the cognitive decline. So I'm just, I don't feel like there's enough benefits to justify a lot of the negatives. Right. Well, uh, if, if that was a significant issue, the fact that like 55 million Americans 20 20 something percent of americans consistently use marijuana and are currently using marijuana Mm -hmm. if that was a thing we would see some kind of drastic change in intellect level in articulation level in uh increased rates of crashes like there have been there literally have been in colorado there are um it's like it increased 10 times the amount of cannabis related uh medical incidents it's still small because well, there's not well obviously if you legalize a drug the amount of incidents related to the drug are obviously mm-hmm. going to go up but i want to know relative to the like to the general of crashes, population no, no no i mean like so prior to legalizing weed the amount mm-hmm. of crashes was x after mm-hmm. legalizing weed the amount of crashes is what because if it's a it's the same number then the fact that they're doing marijuana changed nothing. The amount of crashes is the exact same both before. No, and after. It's, it goes, it, it went higher, right? So it's not, I don't think it was like super substantial, but it does increase your risk because the usage didn't go up incredibly much in, in Colorado. Um, at least the abuse rate didn't, right? The CUD rate didn't, it went from like, it went up 2% percent, percent points. Right. So the question would be is if we compare a society with no, um, marijuana, and then we legalize marijuana, mm-hmm. and there's a marijuana usage. How much does it go up? That that's the question. Right. No, I understand. So 
I think so. I, my point is that it seems like there are, even if they're like a little bit more negligible, the harms don't seem to outweigh the positives. So like for the cognitive decline, people don't even know that this is a possibility. There's a narrative that weed is like not a harmful drug whatsoever, that it's like the most harmless drug out there, but people are having a cognitive decline without even realizing it. And this is like shown in like controlled studies. So it's like, so here it's like the benefits of it is that you get high and that's pretty much all like for maybe a couple individuals, it could help with like their anxiety. Um, and of course there are going to be legitimate medical usages, but I'm not sure if that's the threshold that we need to legalize it. Right. Well, it, if it makes people feel good, then people should have the right to do it. And if they, if, as long as the risks are posted on the little thingy that says, oh, you could die of cancer. What about meth? <laughs> what about meth or cocaine? Is, well, that puts them at cars? risk of other people. But right. so like if, if something puts a significant risk that you're going to crash into other people and it increases it by a significant amount, yes, that's a problem. I so looked up the study for marijuana. Mm-hmm. It's a 6% increase in injury crashes, 4% increase in fatal crashes. This is like nothing. Mm-hmm. So there's like a single digit percentage. This is, this is not like we should immediately ban marijuana because there's no, a 6% increase No, I'm not saying that. I think crashes. there's a conglomeration of, of things that we need to be looking out for, especially when a drug is being marketed as being harmless. It, it's about as close to harmless as you can get and still be counted as a drug. Like again, sugar causes more, caffeine causes more, increases in caffeine cause a higher rate of increase in crashes because caffeine highs are a thing and caffeine crashes are a thing. Um, so caffeine causes a higher increase than this. Uh, this is, Do this you, is like But nothing. caffeine has been studied. It's been approved by the FDA, like literally every other drug has. What is the negative of just decriminalizing it right now and waiting until we have more studies um, on weed before we proceed with potentially loosening the ties for the, the legalization? Because What's we have enough, negative? we well, I'm not sure what the negative would less people get to be feel better for a longer period of time. That would be the negative, which is a pretty bad negative. People take but is our goal for negative. people, but like long term though. So, like, well, well, I, well, before I wanted to have a, a second answer, yeah, to go that ahead. Question. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, if we have a large repository of evidence and data that shows mm-hmm. that weed is less bad than caffeine in literally every way, it damages your brain less, it causes you less impairment, it's cheaper, it actually helps you to do things better. Um, it still has, it's not perfect, it does have consequences, but it's better in every way than a drug the FDA has approved. Isn't it reasonable mm-hmm. to say, it's probably going to get approved by the FDA if they do the studies. What What is, what is your criticism here? So... I think so. I think one of the biggest things is that the FDA will be able to pinpoint exactly what they need to be looking out for, um, especially when it comes to medical situations. Um, I also don't see the negative side effects of caffeine. I think that's over. I think you sometimes you can have an increased, a slight increased risk, risk of anxiety. I have read that, but. I also think it's, so I think it's, it's, even with like alcohol, those things like we could not make them illegal. It just wouldn't happen. It's even if they were unhealthy, it would like, of course the prohibition happened and it was a disaster that literally just would not be possible. So I feel like we're at a stage with like marijuana that we can try to roll it out if we do very responsibly, right? Um, well, same with well, a question, cigarette. Mm-hmm. Question for you really quick. So if it was found that there are studies that show long-term consumption of low doses of caffeine could cause uh, slow damage in the hippocampus region and impaired long-term memory at the same degree as marijuana, would you be in favor of banning caffeine? Again, I feel like that's trying to put the cat back into the bag. If that's the case, I think that's that should be talked about and I think that should be made much more clear but I think it's going to be a much easier um, and well-received um, measure to actually just do the studies and make sure that weed is actually we know what to look out for with weed as the doctors have recommended as a consensus is before we make it legal I think that's going to be much more reasonable than trying to somehow make 
caffeine illegal. Also, is, so I, I just read this from a study that's, I, this wasn't hypothetical. I'm literally just reading off from a study from Wikipedia that shows this is a thing. So you can find these effects for pretty much any drug. Like, was it comparing it directly to weed? No, I'm just reading. I just Googled negative so we don't, of caffeine on study. Caffeine but we don't, do you feel tests. like there's something to be said about like a consensus of doctors being concerned about the side effects of weed? Should, is that something that we should be concerned about? Uh, only if those side effects are greater than any of the other drugs that we already know are accepted by the but FDA. do you but do you see like why would doctors be concerned about that if doctors that are were concerned the case? about literally everything you can find anything imaginable doctors are concerned about but they prescribe they like Adderall they prescribe right yeah they're paying there lots are... of money to do that so but you can find <laughs> any study of anything like too much sugar they're concerned about too much sunlight yeah. they're concerned about too much too much uh, sunscreen they're compared about too do much you think there's legitimacy there no, I think they're mostly, that's just their job. They realize, oh, there's lots of things that could kill you and they have a very small chance of killing you. But do you think that they are able to pinpoint some areas that we should be concerned about and that there's wisdom in the the studies and the cautions that they give? Um, since they're healthcare professionals? It, there's wisdom in that their notifications that you could be aware that you have a 0.0001% chance of getting cancer if you stand in front of a microwave. Yes, we, we, we want to know that. This is good information to know. I'm glad we know it. Am I going to stop using the microwave? No. It doesn't so, seem like a consensus, though, from doctors, though. Like, I understand. I think, like, a better... So, like, the, the um, sugar thing, I think, is a really good example for... Because I know that... I don't want to be like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a point... Because a lot of... I don't think any doctors are saying, like, stop using microwaves, right? But I understand that, like, a lot of doctors are concerned about like sugar consumption i'm trying to find more of a one-to-one comparison doctors i feel like if there's a drug that's that could potentially be legalized and the consensus of doctors is saying hey we need to study this more there's these like cognitive things that we haven't fully nailed down and they can affect people and we don't know the full effect of of these there's there's potential like psychosis episodes that these drugs could potentially have so do you feel like we should like consider that and like try to roll it over to the fda first just even as a precautionary measure no because we have a massive history of massive amounts of users who we we can just look at and talk to and see what the effects are of people who've literally used it every day for the past 20 years uh, we have a huge database of people who have used it we, we have a large amount of of, of data set to look at to show what the effects are. But they also, the thing is though, it's not just the effects of weed, it's also the effects of abuse, right? And they've actually shown that if you legalize it, the rates of abuse, just the fact that you're legalizing it, it goes up, not even just according to the population, it just goes up in general, right? By single digit percentages. Um, there's it's a been legalized in like, all drugs have it. been legalized in several countries and marijuana has been legalized in multiple states and the amount it increases is, is minimal. It's not like another 10% start using drugs. No. But so there's, you're right. But at the same time, the abuse rates go up disproportionately to the number of new users. So study people who like doctors typically put that up to social acceptance right if we are making a drug legal there's a social there's a social acceptance that comes with that and there's also a risk that younger people will start doing it as well so i feel like there's like multifaceted like concerns here especially with younger people um and how it can as you said disproportionately affect them in a negative way right Oh yeah, sure. So I'd definitely that, be to be clear. I'm I'm definitely for like having an age limit, like alcohol. Yeah, like. but do you see how like even if it's implicit, um, a legalization will increase um, abuse, a marijuana abuse in younger people, teenagers? Uh, not really. No, because that doesn't actually happen as much. It usually, it's the mm. opposite. If you make it illegal, then more people use it. Like the abolition of alcohol. I forget what it's called. The, the legalization or illegalization doesn't really make much of a difference at all. Like even in countries where it's always been illegal, the usage is still about the same. The usage is about the same in most cultures. So Vox actually did an article um, about weed legalization and abuse. Um, 
And they actually found that legalizing does increase the rate of abuse disproportionately to the number of new users. Um, so what is, it, what is abuse of marijuana? In this so case? Um, it's the DSM. They categorize it and usually they have like a criteria, um, but it usually is a daily usage um, is constitutes abuse. But the, I think there's a, the threshold is more like if you go off of it and you cannot function without it, that type of stuff. Um, dependence constitutes abuse. Um, but the DSM-5 actually goes into, they have like a screening process for what constitutes abuse. But as we talked about earlier, the rates of addiction is like 10%. Mm-hmm. So of users, which is significant. That's much lower than alcohol users. Yeah. So the maximum amount that abuse would go up is 10%. I'm, I'm sorry. That's much higher than alcohol u- users. Well, alcohol alcohol is like users. 50% addiction. Like what? No, no, no. Alcohol users, their abuse rate is actually lower than weed users. And they actually, doctors are saying that that's partially because of the social acceptance of weed and the um, propagation that it is just not harmful yeah it also doesn't make you sick if you drink too much what do you, yeah <laughs> that's also true fair <laughs> that's also probably why um yeah i don't i wouldn't consider smoking marijuana once a day um abuse that, that seems ridiculous like no i mean they have do you not believe that they have like an adequate rationalization for what constitutes weed abuse in the dsm-5 uh probably not no I mean, the DSM-5 is kind of garbage in a lot of ways, but that's a different topic. But, but no, why? I don't think, like, this is, it's kind of a, kind of a ridiculous standard. Why? Because we know the effects are so minimal that you should essentially be able to take as much as you want. Like, how, how do they define sugar abuse or caffeine abuse? So, so specifically with weed abuse, if you go off of it, if you can last, the withdrawal can last up to an entire month and it can actually be debilitating. So you don't get any work done. You're in a really shitty mood. You're irritable. Um, and that's because it rewires your brain and it like the dopamine levels um, go down. Your natural dopamine levels go down because it's supplemented with what the weed, the, the dopamine levels from the weed. So it actually is a physical addiction. They yeah, found. So my question is, is for the DSM-5, do they classify caffeine addiction or caffeine dependency any differently? And the answer is no. I'm They're not sure. Same. I haven't gone into it. it. I just Google it. It's the same definition. Probably. Yeah. So if um, it's. And so, so caffeine, caffeine abuse is the same mm-hmm. thing. If you have coffee every day. And, mm-hmm. and even knowing that you're going to have a coffee high and not, and go through withdrawal, <laughs> you have a coffee, a caffeine addiction. Right. You're so abusing I think the, point... the caffeine, you're abusing the coffee. <laughs> sure. But I think the point being that you're going to have, um, they've, they found correlations between weed abuse and other negative um, effects in your like real life. Right. So typically people who abuse weed report higher levels of, mental illness, which could be just correlational, but there's some data to suggest it's actually causational. And it might be on a case-by-case basis, but also we're just looking at averages, right? Um, And you're looking at significant cognitive decline, right? Um, When you're when you have that amount, amount of weed, there has to be like a level of weed that you that they're able to measure and like the effects of that, right? Well, yeah, but again, so just long-term effects of caffeine use include chronic insomnia, constant anxiety, depression, stomach problems, high blood pressure, uh, low birth weights for babies, miscarriages, mm-hmm. um, like name any other drug you can find worse or equivalent things. So again, all approved. just because, so, okay, you could take the same thing. You know how people, the anti-vaxxers are saying that um, you should take like the the 
horse dewormer, right? A side effect of that could be a heart attack, where a side effect of Zoloft, which is a common SSRI, could also be a heart attack. I don't think it's fair to say, oh, both of them have the same heart attack, therefore they're just as dangerous as each other. I think you're going to have different levels, and that's why I think that doctors are going to be able to say, hey, this one might be a little worse than that based on percentages and the potential for this to happen. Therefore, I'm going to be cautioning people about the horse dewormers and not necessarily about Zoloft, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's levels of risk for sure. Exactly. Um, and so the question would be is like, what is the risk of marijuana compared to the other drugs? And right. from every study I've seen, like marijuana is not that high. It's no, but low. you're just, but what you're doing though, is you're just saying, oh, there's a risk for anxiety if you have caffeine and there's a risk for anxiety if you have um, marijuana, therefore it's equivocated, but that's not necessarily how it works, right? Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is that if caffeine well, the were studies really looking that at bad, the, the damage done by caffeine is equivalent or greater to the damage done by marijuana. Okay. You can Google, you send me that study? Sure. Because that would be interesting. I mean, I feel like if my biggest thing is I feel like if doctors are warning, if the consensus of doctors are saying, hey, there's this recent, um, there's a lot of recent data that's coming out and a lot of recent studies that say that weed is not as safe as we thought it was. And that the narrative that it is like just the safe benign drug is false. I feel like we should be doing more research into it, especially if it's federally um, it's not possible to, to do it now. I think our first step needs to be, um, to be, to make it federally allowable to do research, to do more research and then reevaluate whether it's something that we should move up in the line of medication or if we should just make it fully legal. I think that we have enough background data on the topic to know that it's safe enough. But why do doctors disagree with you? They they literally say that about everything. Doctors say that about literally everything. You can find a news article that everything is dangerous one week. And it's but doctors believe that that everyone should be taking the COVID vaccine, right? Even if it wasn't FDA approved, that's not what's happening with the weed situation. What? Yeah, I don't, doctors don't think everyone should be taking weed. Oh my God, surprise. No, 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 no. You're saying that every, they're cautionary about everything. Obviously, yes, they're not there's, cautionary. There's doctors about that everything. are cautionary about the vaccine as well. There's lots but of it's not the consensus, that. right? The consensus of doctors are saying that the risks outweigh the benefits. The doctors are not yes, saying that about yes. the weed. The doctors are all saying that there are risks to the vaccine, but the, the risks of not taking it are greater than the risks exactly. of taking it. Exactly. So they, all, there are the consensus of doctors is that. The vaccine the has benefits. side effects. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not perfect. Correct. So and the so, consensus is that. So, so the, if, if imagine if the vaccine had no benefits whatsoever other than just making you feel good, mm-hmm. do you think doctors would have a consensus that oh, this is probably not a good thing? Yes. So if okay, if the the only benefit from a vaccine is to make you feel good, obviously they're going to say this is a bad idea because they're doing a cost benefit analysis, right? Similarly, if there's not enough benefit medicinally from weed and there's a lot of detriments they're probably going to advise against taking it right well sure but doctors are going to advise against anything that just makes you feel good at the damage of your body but i think that's i think that the benefits of feeling good outweigh the costs to your body i would say that that's a definitively but the case i don't know if that's the case because doctors also say that it's okay to drink um moderately right so a lot of doctors from my understanding, I haven't done recent research into this, but the accepted consensus is that like one drink of alcohol a day or every few days is usually healthy. If it's like red wine, that type of thing, or at least it's not harmful. Well, I'm sure there's a consensus about a safe amount of marijuana you can take every day too. I don't not. Well, I do agree that there, I think there's a consensus that it's at least much better to not be smoking marijuana all the time. <laughs> I think there's a fair consensus. I'm not really worried about those people. I'm not worried about the people who who smoke like every once in a while. I'm more concerned about the fact that legalization increases the rate of abuse um, compared to the rate of users. And I'm more concerned about the effects of the abuse. 
Right. I, I still think we have enough of a body of research from the past to look at from the people who've taken it and for a long enough period of time to say, if this is the average consequence, it's safe. But why, why do you feel like doctors are disagreeing with you? Because they're doctors and they're paid to do that. So uh, the way I see it, I agree with you that a lot of people don't realize the effect that weed is having on them, right? So a lot of people don't know that they're going to have much lower memory, that they wouldn't be able to uh, react very quickly. Um, And a lot of things that happen in a day-to-day, they may not be able to trace back to marijuana usage. If I'm not able to react quickly in a car crash, I'm not going to trace this back to, oh, this is probably because I smoke. That's not what's going to happen, but it might be why. So all I'm saying is that it seems like there is more of a consensus coming out that there are potentially dangerous side effects to weed. And before we make a large step in legalizing it, I think we need to do our due diligence in researching it. Like every single other drug that's gone through, that's prescribed medically or even over the counter. Well, I'm, I'm for FDA doing the research, but I think we should legalize it now because we, again, we have enough data from the past to be like, yeah, it's safe. Like, so you wouldn't obviously mind the consequences, but it's it's not it's not significant enough to be worried about it. What if it was shown that um, there's significant effects on your reaction time, even when you are not high from marijuana? Would you be concerned because that would necessarily be affecting other people? Because you would be driving, you would be having passengers potentially. Um, there's many different ways that that could affect other people would that be something for you that you would be concerned about if we could look at the data and see a massive increase in the amount of crashes caused by this then yes if we don't see it then no if there's if no we could actual, do a controlled study right no i mean if we look at an area that has a large amount of marijuana usage and we see an increase in crashes by a significant margin then we'd be like yeah okay that's that's a problem if we, but the if issue we see, though is that so if you don't have that much that high of a percentage of abusers right of um 20% of americans abusers, use it daily like in the- right and only 10% of the users are going to be abused well not only but that's a big 10% of 20% of the entire population is going to be a relatively well, no, so, small so 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 what i the thing i read earlier is that like 20% of americans use it regularly by your definition every day or in the past few days so uh, okay a huge amount of people are abusers by your definition. And no. So, if, so it, I th- my understanding is like 3% of the entire world's adult population are abusers. That's the st- that's from the like DSM-5 de- definition. Which would make sense like 10% of 10% of the people who use marijuana on a regular basis, not necessarily data daily would be 3% of the world's abuse. population you said? Of the world's adult population. And do you think in a first world country, a larger percent of the population has access to drugs? I think it would depend on the country. Like America? Um, well, yeah. I mean, I think Mexico, I don't know if you would say that was a first world cu- country, but I think they're going to have a higher population of, or a percentage of, I think it's going to depend on their socioeconomic situation. Um, but I, all I'm saying is generally it, yeah, speaking, sure. so, all so, I'm saying is generally speaking as like a statistician, you can't necessarily just look at the overall population and the percentage of car crashes and try to correlate it with a legalization and try to like make a causal effect. The best thing that we could do is have a controlled study and follow like 10 people who smoke on a regular basis and 10 people who do not, and then like measure or however many people and then measure their car crash rates and et cetera, right? Uh, I think a better example is to actually look at countries who have legalized it and the amount of people who use it and compare it to countries where there's low access and compare it to countries that have high access. And we can get a pretty good, accurate understanding of the effects it has on society. And I think that's from a political standpoint, that's better than a controlled study because we know, oh, these countries legalize it. This is the effect it has. No, but you can't isolate the, the, so you have to isolate. So the, the reason for a controlled study is to isolate whatever it is that you are studying, right? You can't necessarily do that by like looking at an entire population. No, no. So like uh, a controlled study does isolate the variable, but it doesn't. Yes. 
take into account how people tend to use it. So it's not it's not making say the population will use it like this. This this is the amount of population that will use it this way. This is the amount of population that will be addicted. This is the amount of population will be affected so much that they get into a crash. No no no. You all of those have things. All of those things are accounted for when we look at a, a city or country that's legalized. Not and necessarily they have the entire spectrum. Not necessarily. I'm I, this this is like interesting to me because there could be other factors. Other. It's not like we live in a static society. you are going to have many things changing within your society, and you don't necessarily know. It could be correlational, but you unless it's a controlled study, you cannot prove causation. It's right. not that's why possible. we look at that's why we look at it in many different countries who have all legalized it in many different states who have all legalized it. We compare the results in all of them and we see if it's about the same every time before and after, we can say, yeah, that's probably correct. It could so so I think there might be a marginal change, but again, if we're focusing on people who are addicted to weed, I think you have to pinpoint that specifically to figure out exactly the percent chance of them getting in a car crash compared to someone who um, uses it um, occasionally or someone who never uses weed at all. I think that's, that's like from a scientific standpoint, from a mathematical standpoint, that's the best way that you can go about proving whether or not um, weed causes that type of effect. Right. That's just no, the best. I don't, I don't, that's not important at all. So like we can legalize drinking bleach. It, bleach is legal. You can go drink Correct. bleach, but no mm-hmm. one does it for some no, un, so, unknown reasons. So what, what, what's more important than knowing the effects on the body, which we do mm-hmm. pretty well know, and they're not very that bad, is that how, how it will impact the society at large if we mm-hmm. legalize it. How many people are going to take it? How many people are going to get addicted? How many people are going to get in right. more car crashes? And we can see all of this data just by looking at the places that have legalized it. Because they provide all of this data. No, I understand. And after. Right. And and I understand what you're saying. All I'm saying is that I think it's just a different way in how to measure things. Because I do prefer to have more of a controlled study. And I think those are much easier to do when you have FDA approval with stuff. I don't see a need to rush the process. And I think caution is much better than just leaping into legalization if doctors are literally telling us that we don't have enough studies, if we don't know enough about weed and its effect, um, if the effect of weed isn't even recognizable by the user, I think it's something we need to be much more careful about um, than just like a a blanket um, legalization. Um, I'm not against legalization in the long run. If it turns out that Um, There are either, I think there are two different things that I would be okay with for legalization. If the effects are very good, if there are many benefits to it, I think that would be enough for me. Or if the the consequences of it are negligible. But that's just not, it doesn't seem like that's what the doctors are saying, right? It seems like they're very concerned about the effects of weed on an individual. And they're also concerned about the recent like societal shift that weed is pushing the the narrative that weed is like completely harmless. Again, I'd say that if there was a legitimate concern, then we would see a significant change comparing countries that have it legal and that have it illegal. I just feel like it's a little conspiratorial, though, for you to be like, doctors are just paid to be like scaredy cats about anything medical. Well, that's literally their job. Like, if anything is dangerous, they tell us it's dangerous. That's kind of what their job is. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying they're wrong. I I agree. There are dangers to marijuana. It's not a perfectly safe drug. The question is, is is the amount of danger significant enough to warrant not legalizing it and waiting for FDA approval? Or do we have enough? past history of data from all over the world like millions and millions and millions of cases of past examples over decades mm-hmm. to conclude that it's probably not that dangerous and it's, it's fine to legalize for now and if the fda we, we can lean towards it safe and if the fda finds something dangerous then we can work on it later but we have enough body of data to say see, it's probably safe but do you see though how if we become too liberal with like legalization it's going to be harder to put the cat back into the bag right no if we do studies after we legalize it it's going to be much it's the same thing with the prohibition right once everything every like the entire 
the United States was drinking alcohol and you're like, hey, by the way, this is illegal. It didn't work, right? I think it's much easier to control it and have a responsible rollout um, if that's what we decide versus just making it legal and then doing our studies retroactively. Uh, again, I think that we have enough body of data to conclude it's it's definitely safe. Okay. Well, I mean, so my understanding and what I'm getting from you is you're saying, I don't really care about the benefits. I understand that there's a lot of detriments, but I like, I think people should be able to feel good if they have, even if it has detrimental effects, yeah, right? If, well, I'd say the detrimental effects have been proven to be so insignificant by comparison to that. the feeling But that's good, not what the doctors are saying. Yes, it is. They all, they, they all agree on this, that the, the, the detriments of marijuana are less than that of the other drugs that are illegal. We know this for a fact. Are they detriment? Sure. So, so they first society? off, no. the other drugs are not fully legal, right? So stuff like... Um, Caffeine? Sure. Well, okay. That, number one, that actually has, that can have positive effects, right? Are, are doctors worried about the sugar consumption in America? Have you yeah. ever heard any doctors say that? Is there a consensus among the doctors? 100%. That they're worried about? Definitely. Should we ban sugar? No, of course not, because it's a vital... Um, building block of our diet. Like we need it. We need carbohydrates. Right. I'm not seeing the difference here. Like so I think there's a difference. So, okay, here's the difference with weed. We do not need weed in any form as humans. It's not something that we absolutely need. Therefore we need to be careful with rolling it out with sugar is something that as humans, we literally need to per- to survive. You can have an excess amount of sugar, just like you can have an excess amount of weed, but we can't make sugar illegal or else we would all die, right? Or at least go into keto. <laughs> um, so, I'll be healthy with six-pack abs like Jordan. <laughs> I just don't know if it's necessarily one-to-one comparison, right? I, I still just, I don't, I don't get it. I think that people should have the freedom to do what they want with their bodies. If they want to cut their own legs off, they should have the right to do that. Um, taking marijuana isn't nearly that bad. But what they about- definitely have the right to take marijuana. But so I understand what you're saying. So basically what you're saying is that unless there's like a direct link between like hurting other people, then pretty much anything should be legal. Right. Well, more like if as long as they're not, it isn't a significant increase in damage done to society to other people. Be legal. So it's kind well, of like a libertarian yourself, argument, so like, right? Obviously, we wouldn't we wouldn't legalize heroin because the damage to yourself is also bad. But it's it's just if there isn't a significant amount of damage done, then it should be legal. So, do you think there's something to be said about about normalizing it and that effect on adolescents? Well, yeah, I think we should definitely have an age limit for sure. I agree. But there. that doesn't work should... though. What? Age limits, you know how it is, right? Yes. People take drugs even though they're illegal. People drink alcohol before they're 21. That doesn't make a difference here. Like they're going to do it one way or the other. That's not the point here is that we shouldn't keep it illegal because it does very minimal damage. So if this is from a study, I understand you're having, I feel like it's a more libertarian perspective and I understand that, but this is, these are from multiple PhDs and their conclusion of the study is that um, empirical, it says empirical and clinical studies reviewed here clearly demonstrate pathological effects of cannabis smoking on physical and especially mental health, as well as an interface with social and occupational functioning. We did not find a single methodologically sound study to suggest that the benefits of smoking cannabis outweigh the associated risks. These negative, this negative data far outweighs documented benefits for a limited set of medical indications for which safe and effective alternative treatments are readily available. Advocacy groups are pursuing legalization or medical use of smoked cannabis, largely ignoring pills containing extracted THC and other cannabinoids. Um, It appears, therefore, that it is not the benefit of active cannabis ingredients, but the route of administration. A wider set of indications in the ritual of use that's being advocated. Based on empirical and clinical evidence reviewed here, it seems safe to conclude that if there's any medical role 
of the cannabinoid drug, it lies within the chemical med- modified extracts, not within the cannabis plant. So it seems like doctors are even saying that even from a medical perspective, it's not even like you don't even need weed. And I think I understand that that might be a little extreme. And I understand well, no, that- Well, no, the, the study was saying that you can get the same results with THC by extracting it and still giving them the THC. And through a pill. Weed. Or see, um, not even THC, but also um, CBD. That's right, another, but that makes, that like makes perfect sense. If you can get the right. exact same results from a medical standpoint without- the other parts of the drug that damage you, then yes, there is clearly yes. a better result. This has nothing to do with legalizing it in society. This is not saying that this, so, these, right. these things are so bad that it shouldn't fact, be legalized. Establishes the fact that the negatives are far outweigh any benefit. That's literally from, from, their conclusion. From a medical treatment, if there's an alternative that gives you all the positives and no negatives, yeah, but that doesn't yeah. mean that none of the, the things you read said this should not be legalized or the, the benefits. Right, because they're of, not policymakers. And I, I understand that. But I also feel like the fact that we need, I feel like we need to focus on, we need to be responsible when it comes to drugs. And this is what we saw with, um, it's interesting, Portugal, they recently um they decriminalized all of their drugs but they have not legalized weed they have it legalized medically they do not have it legalized um recreationally and the reason for this is because there needs to be a social stigma against just drugs because they tend to be drugs recreational drugs that do not have more benefit than they do detriments because that is that can like literally destroy your society no marijuana cannot Mm -hmm. destroy your society it why because it's legal in countries and the society is not destroyed no uh, no no i'm i'm not saying marijuana itself but that idea of drugs being normalized just because it's your freedom to do so and it's as long as it doesn't affect anyone else that's literally promoting that's the normalization of those drugs and that encourages people, right? It's an implicit encouragement. There are countries where every drug is legal. Their society is not destroyed. No, what? Okay, what country is every drug? Because I know Portugal had a huge drug issue and they switched to just decriminalizing it. And it, there was like a lot of benefit that came with that, right? So all I'm saying is that I, I don't know, I literally don't know of one country that has all drugs legal that is functioning well pretty much every single country like even the nordic countries do not have um recreational use of marijuana they just don't because they realize that it's not canada does healthy. canada seems to be doing just fine but they so canada has they're being very strategic with the rollout I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that, but there's no country that just blanket, um, blanket has like all drugs legalized that is doing well. I, I don't Most know if, countries I don't know that are doing con- well. They, they mostly just have them decriminalized. I don't think they yeah. have actually legalized. That's what I want. I want all drugs decriminalized. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Decriminalize them, do research on them if we can. And then try not to promote the drugs that are have like less because okay i feel well, is, like there's there a difference between decriminalizing all drugs and legalizing them in the sense that they promote the possible use of the drug and they accept they make it acceptable in society that's literally the whole premise of of um like a certain country that that's literally what has happened if they are illegal that is actually really bad because that results in people um, not being able to go to rehab safely. That that results in people going to jail. Of course, that's going to be terrible. But if you de- decriminalize it, you get a misdemeanor, which is not very important at all. But there's also a lot of um, there's like a, a lot of like loopholes that if you actually go to rehab, if you actually try to get help, there's no consequences whatsoever. And you actually can do that in a healthy way. I think we should be promoting a society that prioritizes health, right? So Netherlands, Switzerland, Portugal. Mm-hmm. 
Portugal, Netherlands, Switzerland seem to be doing good. I'm Portugal not, is decriminalized. They, nothing is yeah, legal. Well, yeah, yeah. I, 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 when I said uh, legalized, I meant decriminalized. So, so these these places have all decriminalized it, which means they are socially accepting the use of drugs. No, they they're not it more socially acceptable. No, no, no. That they went. So Portugal literally went from making it illegal to making it criminalized, but they are very, very, very far away from legalizing it because they want to keep they want to keep that stigma there. And they have been very vocal about this, the importance of keeping the stigma there with and, and also providing the help without the fear of punishment. That's like their entire um, that's like why they decriminalized it. But they do not want to make it legal because they had such a bad drug problem initially. They don't want to go back to that. So there needs to be the stigma there. But at the same time, people need to be pursuing um, treatment, right? They can't be afraid to pursue treatment. That would be terrible. And that's what's happening now. Not as much with weed, but with other drugs, right? Okay. So, so my point was, was that when you claimed that, uh, being accepting of drugs in the society will destroy the society, <laughs> that's false. General drugs, not, I'm not talking about just marijuana, but just drugs in general. Yeah. The, the being accepting of drugs does not destroy society. I'm not talking to accepting of drugs. I'm talking about legalizing, legalizing mass legalization so, so of drugs. Most most societies throughout human history, you could smoke whatever plant you wanted to smoke. They didn't okay. have like. And like, do you, through, why do you think through, that's changed? Uh, governments like to control people. We also can't look at lots of things that we should be able to do. Do you do you think doctors might have been like, hey? This might be bad for people. Maybe, we, maybe well, we should take so, some measures to protect my, my, people. My point, my point was was that none of their societies weren't all destroyed. We we kept going. Hum, humanity kept going. Do you think the drugs were nearly as dangerous as they are now? I mean what? the the effect of, like the um, strength of THC is like doubled in the last decade. I think it's kind of silly to say that you know drugs. Like a few hundred years ago, I mean, even like the opioid like they, doing... the opioid crisis in China that destroyed their society, right? No, mm -hmm. like like opium yeah. has been a thing in lots of societies, it and there's been society. crises. Yeah, yes, yeah, not everyone, not every single it. society. I'm not saying every drugs. single society. I'm saying that the legalization of it can actually be very detrimental to societies. And I'm not, of course, this isn't specifically about weed because I understand that weed is not a, an incredibly, compared to all the other drugs, it is not a hugely dangerous drug. And I understand that. All I'm saying is that legalization does have um, a normalizing factor. And especially when it comes to younger people, I think that's going to be an implicit, um, I, I I guess if we do it in a certain way, because I guess smoking, I think that's gone down. And I think that's largely because of the propaganda against smoke, good propaganda against smoking. But generally speaking, legalization seems to be a, um, an encouragement um, or at least a saying, hey, this is OK from the government. It's how it's perceived. This is literally a Vox article, did an, a Vox did an article on this, talking about how the legalization causes increase in abuse, right? Right. So, so what I'm saying and, is, is that's fine. It's totally fine to be accepting of marijuana use. If every single person on the planet was totally fine with accepting of marijuana use, society would not collapse. Do you think we should be focusing on having a healthier society? No, As, like, Do you think government... Hmm? I think we should focus on a happier society, not a healthier society. Do you think healthy typically being healthy typically equals being happier? No. Like I, I used to Why? have like a six pack. I worked out. I know, lost no, 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 pounds. not just physical, like but mental. There's like a, there's like a um there seems to be a causal relationship between weed and negative psychological situations. So do you think that maybe it can actually be contributing to a less mentally healthy society no i think it makes people feel better maybe in the short term but do you think that that contributes to a happier society 
in yes. general. I think people having the freedom to feel better when they need to feel better, when they're stressed, to like have something to de-stress them, I think it helps. Do yes. you think those are, there are healthier ways to do those things, right? Um, possibly, but they may or may not work. I think each individual should have the right to choose which method works best for them. But do you think that might be something that they should do in consultation with their doctor? No, I think they should get to decide what makes them feel better themselves. But doesn't, but that opens up a, I feel like with your frame of logic, many, 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 many drugs could, should be legal. They should. And I think that, so, okay, what drugs should not be legal? Uh, I'd say heroin, meth, um, cocaine. But why meth? Because it'll kill you. Mm. Not necessarily, not if you don't do it all the time. Isn't that your own decision? Right, but it, it there's an amount. The amount it takes to kill you and be addicted is significantly lower. So it's very easy to get addicted. And but where's the line you. there then? Um, I could probably like actually make a number for you if you want, but marijuana isn't even close to that number. But Neither do you see how sugar. that's kind of arbitrary? No, it's like all the doctors are saying, Hey, this is, there's like no benefits to this. Any benefits that could be derived from this could be taken from sources that are not necessarily medical, the medical benefits. Feel good is still mm -hmm. a benefit. Feel good is definitely a benefit. Okay. So, so what if the actual feeling good is also contributing to, um, worse cognitive effects? That would be your choice. If you prefer the feeling good to the cognitive effects, that's fine. But again, what if, so where's the line though? So like, what if you feel, if you are, if you like the feeling good from methamphetamine, why should anyone else decide that that should, that you should not feel good, even if there is a risk of you dying? So like, where do you see how that's a little arbitrary? No, it's not arbitrary at all. It's Why? based on the amount of damage that can be done to yourself by the consumption rate and the addiction rate. So Who do you think rate, is the best person to determine that, though? Who Who do I think is the best um, voters? So, do you think you think people should just like vote on what drugs they think that should be legal and what yeah. drugs should not? Yeah. I think that's something that I think that's something to actually, if people are actually informed on the data, I think that's something that might actually work. I think that could potentially be a solution. But I think that in order to do that, we need to have studies. And I think that needs to go through the FDA, right? And I think that's where I think that's where it comes down to is I think you think that we have enough studies. And I'm like, hey, we haven't even gone through the FDA here. Let's like do some more studies in before we let the cat out of the bag here. You know what I mean? I, I don't think even if we did infinitely many more studies, we would find anything more significant than we already know. My perspective is that that doctors should be the one to determine that. And if they think we need more studies, we probably need more studies. Right. I think that's where we disagree. I think the doctors are the ones who should provide the information but not the ones who make the decisions here. I think the people are the ones who should make the decisions But they're not, here. though. They're saying that we need to research it more before they can say whether or not it could be, like, beneficial in A, B, and C way or whether or not the detriments can be, are, like, significant, right? There is a 0% chance that we find any significantly extra side effects that we don't already know about. But the, we, the only thing these studies could possibly do is give us more precise numbers. We, are, we know everything that marijuana can possibly do to you because there's I don't think that's that true it. though. I mean, so, okay. So for example, the cognitive decline, people didn't even realize that that could potentially be a thing until the what? cognitive decline, right? People didn't know that this was possible. Like, so the self That was like the first thing people always suggested that it was going to do was cognitive. That was, that's no, the but first they don't, thing. No, no, no. I'm saying that people don't see that in themselves right? They yeah, say it's very minimal. No, that's not why it's not. It's actually significant, but people just don't see it because they don't test themselves. Right. But it's a very significant cognitive decline. What, what do you mean by significant here? I have a study here. I can bring it up for you. 
Like, oh, like give right. me the skills that you can use and the skills that you stop being able to do. Yes. Okay. 100%. This study goes through this. And if you want to look it up, it is cannabis use and cognitive dysfunction. And it's from NIH.gov. Let me see here. All right. Trying to find exactly where it is. I was on mute. That's embarrassing. Folks, want to let you know, our guests are linked to the description box. Highly encourage you to click on their links if you're like, hmm, interesting. I want to hear more. Well, click on those links. And that includes at the podcast, as we also have a Modern Day Debate podcast. So I also want to remind you folks in the live chat, want to remind you, attack the arguments and not the person. And folks, I have said it. I'm going to say it again because I have no apologies for saying it. Generally in the chat, there have been way more personal attacks from the side that is presumably pro-legalization. And some of you are like, oh, James, how could you say that and lump us together? I'm, gonna, mm. ah. I'm for legalization, to be completely honest. Now, my goal is to moderate this debate in the most fair way. But I, I've got to tell you that I'm saying this to say, hey, if you are for legalization or if you're against, I would say for both sides, like, don't make your side look worse by doing personal attacks. Like that doesn't make your side seem more credible or academic, okay? Like it's the opposite. So I do wanna encourage you no matter what side you are on, but I do wanna, I do wanna say it is true that there have been a ton and I, folks, I actually, like I said, am pro-legalization, but I do wanna let you know, you make our side look worse if you're doing personal attacks. So that is absolutely important. And the same rule applies that if you're against legalization, that your side looks worse as a result of you doing that. So do want to remind you, folks, we are glad you are here. But if that's something that you're like, oh, I, like, I'm defensive and triggered because James said attack the arguments instead of the person, the unsubscribe button is just below this video. Please <laughs> hit it because we just you're not the kind of person we're looking for in the chat. It, like we, we want a community that's saying, hey, we'll go crazy in attacking the arguments. That's fun. We'll have a good old time doing it. But in terms of personal attacks, making fun of, you know, Tom's haircut, all of that stuff, please leave, leave him alone. So uh, <laughs> it wasn't really, but oh, I mean, as far as we know, but do want to remind you both guests are linked in the description. And so we will uh, give it over to Carissa as uh, if you're ready for us, Carissa. I totally condone making fun of James hair. You can do that in the chat. I approve. <laughs> Tremendous hair. So basically I'm, also, I'm still trying to find it in this specific study, but I can say with reasonably cert reasonable certainty that um, that the effects tend to be um, longer response times and memory, and they are pretty substantial. I think it's in the Bartholomew study, and I think I can't find it in this one, but I remember looking at it and it was pretty substantial. So I don't know, T-Jump. Pretty substantial how? Like you, you can't remember a few extra letters in, a, in an IQ test? No, I think it's like um, compared to, it's like 10. So I think, so for, if I remember correctly, huh, um, they would show you a video and then like ask you what like restaurants were shown in the video. And people who used marijuana regularly or used marijuana um, had much less memory than the people who do not. Um, and it's significant, like it was like four compared to like 15. It was like significant. Um, so the terribly, I, terrible more. effects is they couldn't remember the names of restaurants. But they do got, you see, how, okay, that translates to more real well, that's, that's the part right? I'm more interested in. Like, I, I don't... Taking a so, test like that, you don't, you just don't care. Like people so, not okay. caring is totally fine. But so it, I want to know what, what, how does that affect them in real life? Do they, do they have lower income levels? Do, do they have? Yes. That, that would be good. Show us, show us the data that this actually has some kind of an actual impact on their life. 
somehow. So, yeah. So it does, there is a correlation. And again, it's not necessarily causation, um, but there's a correlation with lower academic success, um, lower job success, lower so socioeconomic level. Um, well, I need, I need amounts because saying it's lower doesn't tell me anything. If it's lower by 0.001%. Like I don't, it doesn't mean anything. I need to know like what is, what is the actual effect that this has? Cause I've heard no actual effects. Okay. Let me see. All right. All right. So there is a PubMed.gov article that I defined. It says, for overall use, we found a strong positive social gradient. The lower the FSES or the higher the frequency of use, the lower the odds ratio from 0.85 to 0.52 for 10 plus uses in the past year among farmers. <laughs> Okay. Uh, for frequent use, we found strong negative gradients. Um, let's see. The lower the FSES category, the higher the OR. And likewise for cannabis use disorder and heavy use. So conclusions is adolescents from affluent families are more prone to experimentation with cannabis and to use it at low levels, but present lower levels of frequency, heavy or problematic use than those from the SES. Cat okay, I don't think that's exactly. Farmers right. smoke pot. <laughs> no, French farmers. Um, Even better. I know. I know I actually read something on it. I should have written down exactly what it was, but I will find it and I will send it to you, but I do remember it being pretty significant. Juicy. And do want to remind you folks, our guests are linked in the description as well as in the podcast description. Folks, if you haven't already checked out the podcast, what are you waiting for? You can pull out your phones right now and find Modern Day Debate as we have every single debate uploaded within 24 hours of the debate being live. Tremendous. Any last points from Carissa or you, Tom? Yeah, so I, I just Googled some studies. So uh, this one is from... Science Direct, uh, residual effects of cannabis use on neuropsychopathology -psych functioning. Data on substance use as well as neurocognitive measures were assessed with 804 adolescents, males and females, age, 19, age 14 to 19. Our data suggests that decision-making is not impaired when cannabis is used in moderation on onset occurs after the age of 15. Mm -hmm. We find no evidence to support the presumption that cannabis consumption leads to a decline in neurocognitive neuro ability. So that's for moderate use, right? Yep. That's fair. I think that's a, there's a difference, and I think I, I I meant to make that clear between moderate moderate and heavy usage, right? So if moderate use just causes no damage, mm -hmm. and ninety percent of people are moderate and don't get addicted to it, right? But legalization increases that rate. Not significantly. Really. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. There's a okay. I can send you. There's a Vox article. Vox, on this. Vox is not a science paper. Like no, they, they interviewed a um, an actual doctor, and they, a policy they, expert, they, they a drug policy they expert. Interviewed a doctor. So does Trump. The like Fox News interviews doctors. No, like but they did a. Okay, hold on. Vox legalization. Marijuana. They. It was actually like a specialist on this who actually was in favor of legalizing it, but they thought their position was that it needed to be done very responsibly and that we should look at potential legalization similar to DC. Um, but, okay, a new study found marijuana leads to more problematic use. Um, and let me look at the study here. So, so I found one where it says the difference, um, in legalization versus non-legalization is 3.4%. Which is a sig statistically significant, probably, right? Or else they wouldn't have brought it up. It's, it's 11 to 15. It's not. Among so, the 11 states that have legalized marijuana, the rates in 2011 prior to legalization averaged 15 compared to 11. 
So that's pretty big, right? It's no, not. So no, no, no. It's a three percent. Three percentage no. points, right? So that's that's moving, but that's an that's a much bigger increase, right? So if you're moving from eleven to fifteen percent, that's going to be a bigger jump, right? This, this this is less than global warming numbers. What? Okay, it says association between recreational marijuana legalization in the United States, changes in marijuana use and cannabis use disorder from 2008 and 2016. This is from JAMA Psychiatry. And let's see, if you go down to the conclusions, we believe that this study offers a novel major step forward in understanding the changes in marijuana use that may follow the legalization of recreational use in the United States. The study's many strengths include large nationally representative samples across multiple years and major age groups. A survey designed that produces accurate state level act, yada yada. However, um, Legalization of recreational marijuana has the potential to provide, um, I'm trying to see here, how the, the potential for frequent use in CUD, which is cannabis um, usage um, dependency, is an important public health concern that warrants ongoing study and investment and substance use prevention and treatment to prevent unintended harm. So like this is even a pro-legalization. What did it say anything piece. about the amount of abuse that increases by legalization in anything you just read? I can go up and I can actually look at the data and let's try see like here. control F abuse. So, so I mean, are you asking what they define as abuse? No, I want to know like how much does the abuse increase with legalization? I think they Percents, have it as number, problematic use. That would be fine too. How much does problematic use increase with legalization? Is it is it a single digit percentage? All right. To distinguish the uh, see. Okay, here's the data part of it. Um, it doesn't say any, I'm not finding anything, any like specific data point about it, but okay, here, there's this. Among respondents age 26 or older, past month marijuana use um, increased from 5.67, to 7.1. Um, 2%? So was that a 2% increase? Uh, yeah, a little under. Um, I found one too. It's like legalization increased the probability of adolescent initiation of marijuana. So it's not, it's just any usage at all. Among 0 0.32 to 0 0.46. Oh my so, God. So, but the point being though, is that's like doubling, right? That's five, and I understand. Increase, a five to 6% increase. But do you realize that like when we're looking at the effects, it's, that's like doubling the number of people who might be like, it's a significant no, no, no. So, amount. So it might not be like a is ten percent of that five percent. So it's half a percent. Half a percent increase in addiction. So that's but no, they like literally said, and again, this is like a pro legalization study, and they're literally saying that this is an important concern. Okay. It's an important public so okay, I understand as like so from the end, yeah, so like both of us just read the data on it. It might just seem like a few percentage points, but if it's significantly significant, it's something to be concerned about, right? Just a few percentage points. It's like a pretty big difference in population, right? And even like the pro-legalization people are like, hey, this is a public health concern that warrants ongoing study and investment. It's something mm -hmm. that is concerning, 
Like, all I'm saying, I'm not like fully against. I'm like, literally. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think you could ever find a single thing a doctor would not say this warrants further study ever. So I I I understand that and I agree with that, but I think if literal people who are pro legalization like doctors or statisticians who are pro legalization are saying this is pretty important this is a concern we need to figure this out i think that might be something to think about right so my point is that generally speaking i think weed isn't like an incredibly harmful drug i do not think the narrative that it is harmless is accurate And I think we should be listening to doctors when they're saying, hey, we need to do more studies on this. We need to get the FDA on this. We need to decriminalize this and figure out what we want to do with it, right? I'm not fully against legalization. I'm really not. Um, But I feel like we need more studies on it, right? That's my only point. And I think that's pretty fair given the fact the new developments in cognitive decline and actually seeing how it changes your brain it actually shrinking in some cases the hippocampus depending on how heavy your usage is now that's like significant use but still it's something to consider and it's something that we need to do more studies on as per the doctors right World Health Organization announced a scientific consensus on medical cannabis. Um, we are extremely pleased that the World Health Organization has finally recognized the therapeutic potential of cannabis and its derivatives as a safe and effective medicine. There we go. It's medical. I think that's that's important. I'm not again. I'm not as concerned about medical. I think the way that we that we do, and I I wonder if you would agree with this. Are you in a state that has medical marijuana? Mm, I don't think so. Maybe I don't. I haven't checked. <laughs> um. But they use a business model with it. And that's something that the Vox article was actually talking about with a public health minister who was saying that we don't want to have a business model when it comes to drugs, right? We don't want to be incentivizing um, addiction, which is basically what capitalism would do with drugs. You're trying to sell people more. You have sales. You're trying to incentivize more, um, more purchases, right? So that's kind of already what's happening in a lot of states with medical marijuana, and it just doesn't seem like it's medical. It just seems like you just pay a lot of money to your doctor to get a green card. (laughs) And then you're able to just like purchase stuff at a store like you would recreationally. So it's odd to me. Um, but I'm not saying I absolutely believe that there are some usage uses for THC or or CBD medically. All I'm saying is that we need more research. So I'm unable to find anything about the consensus of doctors on recreational usage. Um, obviously, it has downsides, but I think anything in re- reference to the consensus is going to be for medical usage and only reference to medical usage. Can you find any doctor that is like, or group of doctors that is advocating for legalization for recreational? Doctors pro recreational legalization of marijuana. Doctors for cannibal usage. There's an entire website of them. So, yeah. So, are they, is it medical or is it for recreational? Recreational. Do they, like engage with any of the data or are they just like, Hey, this is yeah. a potential. Pro, re, pro marijuana doctors explain their support for legalization. So I don't know. It's interesting. It seems like from the academic sources that I was looking through, it seems like at least the research side of, I guess the, the medical field isn't super pro weed. Um, I'm not even talking about like the legalization, but just generally speaking, they see a lot of detriments to it, but. I think you're just reading into the standard work of all medical fields, which is to identify the consequences and side effects and say, these are dangerous. We need to study these, which is literally what they do for everything. And then interpreting that as them being against or saying that it's, uh, dangerous enough to not warrant 
recreational use or something like that. I don't think that's what any of the studies you've read indicate. Most of the studies you've read indicate that there is a better option for medical uses, which is mm-hmm. to extract the CBD and THC and use those in a drug form without having the additional risks, risks with the, of the plant, which is fine. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. But I don't think any of the things you read have any implications on the recreational usage or a comparison of regular drugs or drugs that are potentially legal or should be legal. I don't think any of the things you referenced said anything about that. No, I agree that no, nothing that I referenced actually talked about like the legalization. And as you said, I don't think doctors, that's their main purpose. Their main purpose is to be like, hey, this is something that like we need to look at the health benefits because of course that's their focus is the health, um, the health perspectives on it. Um, and I understand that, but I also feel like a lot of them saying that there needs to be further research on it I think it warrants going to the FDA first. That's all. I don't I don't think that's something any doctor would ever not say about anything ever. And so I don't think that yeah. is a way to assess. But I think there's a reason for that, though. There's a reason for that. <laughs> it's because they're doctors and they realize we don't know everything and we should study everything because it's literally their job. I don't think it's actually indicative of the fact that it's dangerous that they say we should study it more. But do you see them saying that like the FDA could actually provide um, provide more thorough study that would sure. ensure that it's safe and effective in multiple sure. components? Sure, but I, again, I don't think I don't think that with the amount of data we have that it's even possible for that to turn up anything new or surprising. It's but be okay, like, it's been. It's like what most studies do is that they take, we have a theory that has some, um, what's it, I forget what it's called, the error level in the theory, the Mm -hmm. plus or minus. It could be this, could be this. This, Yeah. Um, And then we do a study to try and lower that down. The FDA will continue to lower down the error range, but what we know now is probably correct. There's probably not going to, there's probably nothing new we're going to learn. We're just going to lower down the margin of error to a much lower level than it is, Mm -hmm. which is already really good. We, we already have a very good understanding of what marijuana is, what it does. And that is just going to give us more of an understanding. And it, we're going to say the exact same conclusion we did already, pretty much. I think you might be right. And I hope that that would be the case. But I also think that there have been some more um, advancements, at least from just what I've been reading. They've been saying that there's been more advancements, even like in the past like 10 years um, with studying marijuana And those same articles are saying that, or those, yeah, those same scholarly articles are saying that we need to have FDA look into it even more and have those restrictions lifted and studying um, and studying it. So we have, are able to have more controlled um, studies. And I understand that there's there's probably not going to be anything groundbreaking, but at least people are going to have a more, a better idea of, um, what they are doing to their bodies. Um, That's just generally, I feel like that's just the safer. I think you're probably right is that there's nothing going to be groundbreaking, but at the same time, I think there will be um, more clarity and more diligence done um, if we are able to have it certified by the FDA. And also that could even... um, dosages might also be a little bit better too. <laughs> like we can figure out the dosages because even for like a potential medical um, results, I guess. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. I mean, I your argument is perfectly reasonable that we should do more studying. Um, yeah. But I, given the evidence we have, I, I would bet – all of the money I have that we're going to discover absolutely nothing that we don't already know and that we Mm -hmm. know the harms and we could pretty much just put exactly what we have now on the marijuana label and say, Oh, doing marijuana has these side effects, be warned and legalize it. And that would be perfectly fine. Is that something you'd be down with though? Yes. Do you think we should have restrictions on the way that it's um, sold marijuana? Sure. Like Like limitation. I mean, alcohol is legal. So I'd say we mm-hmm. legalize it just like we do alcohol. Do you think we should 
I don't know if there are, are there restrictions on how much alcohol you can buy? There might be in some states. <laughs> I don't know. I've never bought enough. <laughs> but do you, would you be okay with that for, for marijuana is having like something that might help with the abuse of it? a little bit sure I, I would legalize it in the exact same way we do alcohol in whatever state and leave it up to the states of what they do and partially just go with the, the snoop dog method <laughs> what's the snoop dog method smoke weed every day <laughs> are you concerned at all about the nope potentials that no nope uh i i still i, I consider myself still pretty intelligent i don't know mm-hmm. if i've been dumbed down then i'm I, I don't know. I, I still think I'm at like three Jameses. I consider myself a three, three, ja- three and a half Jameses. So you're not half the man I am, T Jump. But we are <laughs> ready to go into Q and A pretty quick here. So I will give you a chance if either or both of you uh, want a chance to draw together any any final threads from this debate. Otherwise, we'll jump right into it. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> I'm ready. to Get into the Q and A. I think that sounds good. Excellent. And want to remind you folks, our guests are linked in the description. So, hey, if you want to hear more from Carissa or Tom, click on those links below. Their links are waiting for you. And so thanks so much for your question coming in from this one is Ozzy. And thank you very much says the places that just decriminalize use just decriminalized use it as a pretext to search homes and cars for a smell and to fine poor people and failure to pay means arrest we do that where it's illegal too i think um in portugal they've been very successful at decriminalizing so i may be for some places yeah, I don't understand why would, like, I, at first I was thought Ozian was saying that they decriminalize it. Ozian, are you saying they decriminalize it as a means to to search homes and cars for the smell? Like, what? But I think, how I, think, can... I think his argument is that if you decriminalize it but don't legalize it, the reason you do that is so that you have an excuse for police to be able to say, oh, I smell this illegal substance because it's a really easy way for cops to be able to do a search without having to have a warrant. And so it gives police the opportunity to execute their jobs more liberally because it's such a broad uh, law. Okay, I think I get it. <laughs> and Experiments in Prebiotic Chemistry says, thanks, t- Tom, for representing my view on this great job. It's my view. You stole my view. And Andrew Rouse says, Tom, she speaks the truth about weed addiction. Yeah, I, I, 10%. Like, like I, I'm addicted to video games. This addiction isn't really a big deal. You got it. And thank you very much for this question. Christian Stafford says, really admire the work you do, James. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, And they say, the online debate space is better for it. That means a lot, Christian, seriously. And Raza says, this dab is for you, Carissa. Cheers. <laughs> is dab some sort of uh, drug innuendo? Or uh, uh... no, it's it's when you do this thingy with your face. That's a dab. Is it really? <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you for teaching me that, Tom. The Batman <laughs> says freaking boomers. <laughs> always uh, lifting the uh, quality of conversation. Says T Dump getting spanked again. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's true. Oh, hey, hey, man. I may or may not be into that kind of thing. That's true. Uh, <laughs> nasty guy. Net7 says legalizing pot is a naively foolish idea everywhere in West Phoenix, namely Meriv- Merivale. People are smoking it, and we have absolutely one of the dirtiest, poorest, crime ridden neighborhoods in the city and state. That's because of weed, apparently. <laughs> And I, I, I don't know if that's a, I see what you're saying. I, Net seven, just to, were you trying to imply that it like became that way after it was legalized? I, I, it wasn't clear from the, but we'll give you a chance in chat if that was what your argument was. I, I just couldn't, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm reading into it, but a sparrow, f- go ahead, Carissa, if you had something. I just was going to say, I feel like that's a common thing that 
Um, if you legalize weed, then everyone will lose their uh, drive in life and that type of stuff. And I don't necessarily think that's the case. Um, I think you can use weed and you can be productive. Um, there is some correlation between that and just unproductivity, but I don't think it's so extensive that that's going to be the only thing that causes um, like a community to crumble or something like that. You got it. And I want to remind you folks, if you haven't seen it, it's pinned at the top of the chat. Don't miss it, folks. We, next month, September, we're starting panels. We're going to do two panels a week. One is going to be on politics, so virtually the same thing that Dylan Burns does. We're doing it on a different night because we like Dylan. We don't want to overlap with his schedule. The other one will be a religion panel. That is going to be on religion, atheism, topics. Same thing. We'll have two to three topics at a time. And there's a sign-up sheet. So if you're like, ooh, I like that. I want to hear more. Well, click on that Google Sheets link that I have pinned to the top of the chat. If you put your name, stance, and email in there, we can get you on. This is a great way for us to be able to screen people. It's way more efficient because this way we can kind of observe you while you're on the show and it doesn't put as much stress on you because if there's seven people, it's like, well, you don't have to feel as much stress in terms of your first debate having, you could say, half the time put on you. And so do want to let you know, folks, we are wanting new faces on Modern Day Debate. And so thanks so much for checking that out. This one coming in from Net7 was just clarifying. This is about the uh, neighborhoods that got nasty. Net7 says mm -hmm. drugs, the biggest one being weed, ruined mm -hmm. the neighborhood. That's what I'm trying to say. So I think they're saying it came after. Yeah, I'm betting if I just look up the crime data, I would probably prove that false. Because I imagine the crime data doesn't really change in a city over the past like 10 years. It doesn't, it doesn't drastically change. I'm curious, though, if that could be if that effect is the same effect for the car crashes. So if, I think sometimes if you just look generally what happens to a neighborhood. I understand that you were talking about averages over all of the places that made weed legal, but still I I like to have more controlled studies. Six <laughs> percent. There's a six percent increase in car crashes. That's a big increase. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that big, but it's pretty big. <laughs> Juicy and thanks for this one coming in from Robert Summers says, Carissa, did you really think we need the quote unquote additional sugar that we see in our society? Not talking about natural sugars. Uh, okay. Um, so my, my response to that would be that I understand what he's saying, but also at the same time, like cane sugar is pretty natural because it comes from plants <laughs> sugar cane <laughs> so I'm like generally speaking one of the reasons I think it would be easier to just decriminalize weed but not making it fully fully legal is that it is generally difficult to grow your own weed not saying that people can't do it but it's a difficult plant to grow and that's not the case everyone can access sugar um in some forms, some derivatives. So I just don't feel like it would be very effective. You got it. And John Cipperini, thanks for your question. So said, so as a weed smoker, why do you believe I should be punished in parentheses, which is what a misdemeanor is for smoking weed? I know the effects and I still do it. So generally, I don't think that most people get away with smoking weed with it being decriminalized. <laughs> so I think the people that would be most targeted would be people who were selling it. Um, it's a misdemeanor where I am to smoke weed, but like literally no one gets like prosecuted for smoking weed. Um, it's just not the way it is. I think if you have like a huge amount of it, or if you um, are selling it now, that's that might like change things a little bit. But realistically, it's not going to have that much of an effect. No one's going to go after you just for using. You got it, Anne. This one from Ozian. I actually got that one. Lawrence Litke, thanks for your question, says, Carissa, 
Alcohol, nicotine, and even caffeine also have some negative health effects should these substances also be made a misdemeanor. So I think with the alcohol thing, that ship has sailed. It's not, nothing's going to happen with that. Um, also, it's very easy for people to make alcohol and some alcohol can actually be very dangerous um, if, if you try to make it by yourself and sell it. Um, if you do it wrong, it can like poison you. <laughs> um, prohibition doesn't work with alcohol. I think people also can use it in a healthy way and the, the addiction rate is lower per user than it is for, um, not per, yeah, the rate is user is lower compared to the usage, um, compared to weed abuse. You got so it. it's a little different, but. And made by Jim Bob. Thanks so much. Says James, your green screen is better than NASA's. Amazing. Thanks so much. Made by Jim Bob. And this one coming in from con the stoner Lynn says, T jump, you know, you can overdose on anything, including vitamin C and even water, right? If so, why imply weed is the exception? And if not, glad I could teach you something. Ha, ha, ha. Because the amount of weed you'd have to smoke to consume enough THC in order to overdose is more than it would literally kill you. It literally, you would have to smoke more than like 10 times your body weight to accomplish that. Edibles, you can do it. Do you know from experience? I, I know of a friend. I smoke occasionally, just to say. I'm not afraid to say it. But, like, I do know of someone who ate, like, six or seven edibles, but they also had some schizophrenia. They ended up in the ER, and it was not good. But I know that's a rarity. Well, but that, that's not the same as an overdose, though. It was considered. They, I think they categorized it because they had, like, six weed brownies. <laughs> <laughs> not shooting for that <laughs> they didn't know <laughs> that it was weed <laughs> thank you very much this one coming in from Killadoggy says ask Carissa do indica and sativa strains of marijuana have the same effects on humans so for I think when it comes to safety I don't know if there's been much much academic study that at least I've seen or any difference in the safety or any differentiation, of course, they're going to affect you differently. Um, I know they also just affect every person differently. So sativa can be like, can wake you up um, for some people and other people just like all weed just makes you sleep. So I think it's going to be a case by case basis. But I don't think like academically in the literature, there's been much of a differentiation. You got it. And this one coming in from Ozzy. And thanks so much. Appreciate it. Says decriminalization doesn't mean misdemeanor. It means a civil infraction and a fine. Misdemeanors are crimes with jail and or a fine. I'm sorry. Can you read that again? For sure. They said decriminalization doesn't mean misdemeanor. It means a civil infraction and a fine. Misdemeanors are crimes with jail and or a fine. Okay, then. So I wouldn't be, that was my bad. I wouldn't be advocating for a misdemeanor. You got it. And I think that's it for the questions. Unless I missed any, let me know in the chat, folks. This is a great opportunity for me to remind you that, yeah, both Carissa's and Tom's link are in the description. <laughs> and I think we've even got it. So now it shows up in the Twitch chat. Let me check. I don't know. Like I'm still learning Twitch. But believe me, if you are on Twitch and you can't find their link, migrate over to YouTube as we've got them linked in the description there. And we really do appreciate our guests. So I always want to encourage you folks in the comments left on this debate, want to encourage you do not attack the person. We want to encourage you to attack the argument. And one last time, I want to say thanks so much, Carissa and Tom, for being with us. Thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. Thank thanks you. For, thanks for Hunter, clearly Hunter Avalon, for joining us today. <laughs> no problem <laughs> <laughs> excellent thanks everybody we will be i'll be back in a moment with some updates on the upcoming panels in september as well as upcoming debates it's going to be juicy so